and it is a collection of essays and short stories about things that I love, things that, uh, that well, that make me happy. And uh, like all of my books, uh, well, most of my books, it is uh, the title, I, I stole the title from a man, so I stole the title from a big boy. Uh, so, I was, um, well, I, so I'm a stepdad. And uh, I was just a stepdad for a really long time. And a couple of years ago, my stepson Ryan asked me if I would adopt him. He came home from college, and, <laughs> and he said to me uh, one night, he said, listen, uh, I've been thinking, like, well, I'm, I'm glad because that's not what a lot, that's usually not what you do when you're in college. <laughs> he said, uh, I really, all the things that I love, all the things that are important to me, and all of the things that really make me who I am, I got from you. And you've been my dad for my whole life. And I was just wondering if you wanted to make that official by adopting me. So several minutes later, when I had composed myself, <laughs> I said yes. And um, we, uh, we entered this ridiculous ridiculously long process uh, of an adult adoption, which I think should be like this. Do you want him to adopt you? Yeah. Do you want to be adopted? Yeah. All right, you're done. <laughs> as it turns out, no, you actually get to navigate a bureaucracy that is as easy to navigate as it is to get the Babel fish in uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide. <laughs> so um, this story uh, I wrote when Ryan was, I think he was probably 14 or 15 when, uh, when I wrote this story. And because we're at a comic book convention, um, it's a story that, on the surface anyway, appears to be about comic books. Um, it's called See a Little Light. Bob Mould's voice came out of my computer speakers. He sang, listen, there's music in the air. I hear your voice coming from somewhere. As I dug through a cabinet in my office beneath my desk. I sensed movement behind me and felt the presence of another person in the room. I turned and I saw Ryan standing in the doorway. He's 21 now, by the way, so this was like six or seven years ago. What are you doing, he asked. I'm looking for my GURPS horror book, I said. He came into the room and crouched down on the floor next to me. Thick GURPS game, it seems pretty cool. Yeah, I said, it's really fun and it was one of my favorite systems when I was your age. I thought for a second. Wait, I mean when I was younger than you. God damn it, I feel old. <laughs> I pulled out a stack of graphic novels, thinking that maybe my GURPS books were behind them, and I carefully set them on the floor between us. Ryan pointed to me for Vendetta, which was on top. I've been thinking about it, and I think the book is better than the movie, he said. It usually is, I said. <laughs> they should have kept in a lot of the stuff they cut, and they sort of changed the entire meaning of the story of the screenplay, especially in the third act. I dug deeper in my cabinet, up to my elbows in a lifetime of literature. Yes, I agree with you, I said, and so does Alan Moore. <laughs> my group's horror book was not there. I sighed heavily, exasperated, defeated. What's wrong? Yeah. I can't find the book, and I'm pretty sure that means it's in the garage somewhere. Oh, oh man, he said. <laughs> That's like minus 10 to your search roll right there. <laughs> I was too frustrated to laugh, but it put a smile on my face regardless. I don't think there's a parent in the world who would get too frustrated to enjoy a glimpse of himself that flashes across his son's face. Yeah, minus ten if I'm lucky. I'm I picked up my books, and as I began to put them back on my shelf, one of them caught my eye. Hey, I think you'd like this. I handed him a copy of a book called Vertigo's First Defenses. It's a few issues from classic Vertigo titles, like Fables, The Invisible, Sandman Mystery Theater. You gave this to me when you got it a few months ago. He said, I really liked it. <laughs> oh, awesome. I set it back on the shelf. Yeah, Fables is great. I put more of my books back. Watchmen, a few Hellblazer, the entire collection of Preacher, 
all my heart back, Sandman's. <laughs> Bob Mole finished singing and Michael Stipe replaced it. <laughs> Brian, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but my throat had suddenly become dry and I stopped to swallow. I think you're mature enough to have full access to my comic book and graphic novel. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> well, look, you appreciate the art, you appreciate the writing, and most importantly, you appreciate the value these books inherently have, as well as their ephemeral value to me. I'd like you to read them, and I would be really happy to share them with you. I looked at him and he said nothing. I didn't expect it to be as important or significant to him as it was to me, and that was okay. I mean, part of being in high school is not attaching importance or significance to moments like this, while attaching them to other things, like what exactly it meant when the cute girl from chemistry class said your shirt was funny. What kind of funny did she mean? Like good funny or bad funny? Like funny weird or funny cool? Like, like funny I should keep talking to her? Or funny I should walk away? Why is she twirling her pen in her hand? What does that mean? Like a say, is that a sign? Like get away from my car? Pen? Or like, come and talk to me about my pen. Come on, dude, I'm sending you signals and you're not getting any of them. <laughs> wow. Thank you, he said. Now, does this include, he spoke gravely, the collection? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess he did understand the importance and significance of the moment after all. Well, I said, listen, let's start in this cabinet with the trade paperbacks and we'll work our way up, all right? I mean, like, I haven't even opened some of these in almost 20 years. God damn it, I feel old. <laughs> okay, he said. But if you ever feel interested in reading one of these, I pointed to a shelf that was filled with stories that mattered to me stories that I hoped to gently pass along to Ryan. You have my permission to come up and read any of them you like. Wow, thanks, he said. Just be careful with them. <laughs> like, really? I want to know, there's not any food on your hands. He grinned at me. Are you sure about this? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sure. Because if you're having second thoughts about it, no, 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 I said, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> it's just that you look a little nervous, is all. I realized that my kid was giving me shit and busting my balls. <laughs> I laughed and he joined me. Ryan, I trust you with my comic books. There, I said it. <laughs> wow. That's hardcore, Will. <laughs> yes, it is. On the radio, Michael Stipe sang, Take a picture here. Take a souvenir. And I told this story to my wife before I wrote it, while we were driving to the store. When I got to the end, and dramatically revealed that I'd given Ryan permission to read my comic books, and he had appreciated the magnitude of the whole thing, all I got back was a blank look. <laughs> it's a big deal, I said. Uh-huh. <laughs> Dude, it's a really big deal. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> This is one of those times when I totally geek out about a nerd thing and you just sort of politely humor me, isn't it? Uh-huh. I'm happy to say it's a